Well, hello everybody. Welcome to my Insights channel. Today I'm going to out of the bottom of the spit. And this is taken from a very interesting story of a person who had a dream back in the 70s. And I have no reason not to believe this. So it was called, he named it Close Encounters. A revelation of things to come. A dream turned nightmare. I had the strangest experience. When I went to bed, the sun was still quite bright, so I didn't leave a light on. <clears throat> we had closed the shutters when we started taking a nap. I left the door to the entrance hall open just enough so a little daylight from the bathroom window would show through the crack and act as a light. I went to sleep and apparently it must have happened just before I woke up. I had this crazy dream. We were at this great big farm. It's not any place we'd been. It was totally different. Everyone was busy and some were in the living room talking. There was a lot of activity going on. But I can't describe it all right now. The main thing was that I was just trying to keep order and see that things were all as it should be. And I walked out and down the little front dirt, dirt road, down a little hill. It was dusk or twilight. And just as I started to walk into the barn, all of a sudden somebody yelled, Here they come! They've come just like they said they would! And the title of that movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, flashed across my mind. The first contact with a flying source of people that had come although I hadn't seen it. I looked up in the sky, and here came these big balls rolling along, about as big as those big push balls they used to have. Balls that are higher than a man's head, great big balls, five or six feet, or about a couple of metres in diameter. <clears throat> and they had crazy faces sort of painted on them. Well, that was my first impression. And some seemed just like one big eyeball. But they all seemed like they were alive. <clears throat> Everybody was frightened and running from them, almost like an invasion. They were dancing through the sky and sort of rolling and rollicking, like they were playing and having fun. But nevertheless, they were also trying to frighten us, or at least were amused at our fright. Then I saw this huge giant coming, must have been 25 feet high, and was walking along behind them, it was though he was directing them. He was in a very strange kind of spacesuit or something, very dark coloured, almost black. I think it was very deep purple, skin tight. He almost looked like he was in a suit of armour, some kind of material, like that guy in Star Wars. He had this funny headgear on. He had a rather strange head and with staring, scary eyes, big pointed ears and kind of sharp nose. It was walking too agile, but was clomping along, directing all these balls that were shooting around the sky. And they were shooting just over our heads and then way up. And zoomed down to frighten people, just like they were laughing when they'd scare somebody and they'd run. So I ran into the barn and watched through the window. And this huge giant kept walking right towards the barn. And he stooped down and looked through the window. His huge face filling up the whole window, cackling and laughing at me. Ha ha ha, I found you, there you are. You don't think you're really going to get away now, do you? So I ran out the other end of the barn, and here they came from that direction too. These giants walking, and the balls shooting out the sky. And by this time, there were some pr very pretty girls with them, in the same strange kind of suits and somewhat same facial appearance. I don't know how to describe their heads or the headgear. I don't know whether it's heads or headgear. Have you ever seen girls with those rabbit hats with the big ears sticking up like the Playboy bunnies wear sometimes? Kind of like a hat that fits around on their face like a helmet with two big ears at the top, on top. Only theirs were sharp pointed ears and their faces almost like beaks and they resembled the giants. The one girl ran toward me like she's so happy to see me. And she's going to grab me, but I didn't like her. So I turned around and ran back into the barn. And she caught up with me and pounced on me anyway. 
The feeling I had was that she threw her arms around me and she sunk her beak in, or, or her teeth into the back of my neck, just like a vampire. And then this funny feeling just flowed over me. It was very pleasant in a way. It felt real good, almost like she injected something. It was just like I went to sleep. I felt this nice warm feeling flowing down my back. I don't know, maybe it was blood running down my back. But it sort of scared me. I mean, I woke up, fully awake, not dreaming anymore. Author, now the dream becomes reality. As I woke up, I suddenly had a strange feeling that the same girl was bending over you. Like she finished me off, and she was there bending over you in the dark, looking down at you, just ready to bite you in the throat. I could almost feel her more than see her, although I could see her faint outline, even though it was pitch black. But somehow I could see her. The minute I opened my eyes and saw her, she just whirled around without standing up and quickly ran out the door. I could hear her click the knob of the handle as she ran, and it suddenly dawned on me the room was absolutely pitch black with no light coming in from the bathroom anymore. I could hardly tell whether the door was open or shut. I thought that I may be mistaken, that you'd just gone to the bathroom, but the light didn't come on. I didn't hear any sound. I leaned over and I could hear you breathing. You still, seemed still there to be asleep. I was quite wide awake when it happened because I just awakened from the dream and was startled by this presence bending over you. It was like she was about to do the same thing to you that she'd just done to me. She was almost like some kind of spiritual vampire. My first impression was to quick turn on the light and finally, in spite of whether it was going to wake you up or not. I felt like we needed some light. I had to turn the light on. I definitely saw this dark figure. I definitely saw her. How I know it was a woman, I don't know, but it was a woman. And how I felt that it resembled those things I was seeing in my dream, I don't know, because it turned out to be pitch dark in here. Just as I woke up, already frightened from the dream, there she was, bending over you. She seemed to know instantly that I had wakened, and she turned around and ran out the door. I heard the clicking as she was shutting the outside door. I, th I thought, you don't suppose one of the maids has sneaked in here and was trying to steal something in the dark because I forgot to turn the light on? I tried to rationalize it away some other way. Afterward, I was lying here trying to figure out what was happening, almost afraid to move. I was looking across to you towards the door trying to figure out why there was not any light on, it slowly began to dawn on me. I had left no light on in the bathroom dark. I couldn't understand how I could have felt that person there, or whatever she was, and at it same time seen her, at the same time seen her. I definitely saw an outline against the door, as she yanked the door open and quickly ran out the door. I could even hear the clicking sounds of the knob, you know, when you grab it and close the outside door. Now, if she was a spirit, and it seems she wouldn't necessarily need to open and shut the doors. But if she was startled in the act of bending over you and going to try to sink a beak or teeth or whatever into you, that was the thing I had, because I just had this dream. She's going to do the same thing to you. Could it be that sometimes they can't dematerialize fast enough? She must have materialized because I could see and sort of feel her. The outside door locks automatically when you shut it. She must have managed to come through and then materialize inside. Could it be that sometimes they can't change over fast enough to make it when they're in the physical material form? You know, ghosts are notorious for materializing, making noises, creaking doors and steps and making all kinds of sounds because when they materialize, they've got to obey the same laws of physics that we do. Jesus went through the door when he was in the spirit and then he materialized right inside the room. He didn't say how he did it. Apparently spirits can dematerialize and then go through a wall or door or anything. She didn't have time to dematerialize because I awoke so suddenly. I was looking right at her. I could see the whole thing and I was wide awake. She turned quickly, opened that door, dashed through it. I could hear a hand on the knob and everything. She opened this door and quickly pulled it almost shut behind her. Closed just a little bit, more than I'd left it. Then I heard the outside door opening and then shutting again. I thought... My God, we should have some light on here. 
because I've always known it's pretty common knowledge that evil spirits and ghosts don't like light. Evil spirits don't like the light. And that's why I always insist on leaving some light on at night. And I thought, well, I hate to wake you up. Apparently, you must have already been awake. But I'm going to have to turn the light on. I couldn't even see my way to get across the room to get out. That was the strangest dream. Real weird. This is a strange country. Portugal. Wow. You know, people are so geared to this scientific UFO stuff. But they couldn't have harmed us, could they? Well, honey, let's face it. The Lord only says he will never allow you to be tempted and tested more than you are able. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God doesn't say they'll not be able to harm you. Look at all the martyrs. He didn't even say that they wouldn't be able to do something with Christ. The devil picked up Jesus and took him up to the pinnacle of the temple, set him on a high mountain, did several other things, all within the limitations of God. <clears throat> In other words, they're not able to do us any permanent damage, especially spiritual. But the Lord does allow us to go through these tests. He even allowed his saints to go through tortures, burning at the stake, crucifixion, all kinds of things. Don't say he won't allow us to be harmed. He won't allow any permanent damage, any permanent harm. And he promises to deliver us from no other way. He delivers us by death. You can always call on the Lord and through him have power of everything. You don't have to worry about anything. This dream is just like what's going to happen. He's going to turn the world over to the devil for a while. And he's going to have power. And he's going to have power with the saints and overcome them. Revelation 13, 7. But what can he do to our spirits? Nothing. He only has power over our bodies like he has in death. The only thing I can get out of that is that the devil is going to really put on some phenomenal manifestations like that in the last days. Just to frighten people, scare them to death. Men's hearts failing for fear. Distress of nations, signs in the sky, and so on. Luke 21, 11, 25, 26. This is just like signs in the sky, what, what I was seeing. You know, well, even those here were quite frightened running for places of refuge. In a lot of movies and TV that I've seen, the enemy is preparing the world. The enemy being the devil here. Remember, everything the devil does is an imitation of what Christ does. The devil has never thought up anything new. His whole organization. You see, Christ coming is literally going to be an invasion from outer space. If you talked about stuff like this a couple of years ago, I would have poo-pooed it or minimized it. But because they've dressed it up all this scientific paraphernalia, spaceships, extraterrestrial beings, invasion around space, superior beings from the outer space, and so on, people will believe it. The devil used to use the spiritualistic mediums in their societies as his means of approach, all these spiritualist churches and so on. But because the work of some of these investigators so discredited the spiritualist mediums work, and Brand is so many as phonies, the devil couldn't use that direct approach anymore. He had to get out the spiritual and religious and put his message into the scientific so that people would accept it. So now he's making all his spiritualistic approaches through scientific forms and media. I know that God definitely engineers certain things, and I'm certain even allow the devil to engineer some things. Invasion from outer space. What a way for the Antichrist to arrive. Just like the second coming of Christ. To arrive like he was coming from outer space. Like he was a superior being. Higher intelligence arriving from some other planet. Or far away solar system, star system. To solve the world's problems. What a way for him to come. Imitate the coming of Christ and make it all sound scientific so people would believe him. People will believe anything that smacks of science or sounds scientific. If it smacks of religion or spirituality, anything like that, forget it. But if they can just make it sound look scientific, then the people perceive him as a superior being that has come to help solve all these terrible problems we have, like a god. And to also mention, yes, we seeded mankind here millions of years ago, blah, blah. Well, it's just a lie. He'd be like a god to them. But his whole thing is to try to put it in a plausible scientific form that people will believe. The Antichrist will be a sort of scientific god, if you want to put it that way. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised that the Antichrist, the devil incarnate, is going to stage some kind of phony invasion from outer space. 
Well, in a way, since that's the devil and his demons, the fallen angels, they are from outer space. But he's going to, well, I'd say inner space. But he's going to use human beings by possession and is somehow going to capture this young man, the Antichrist. This human he's going to use for the Antichrist. Well, I wouldn't even call the Antichrist human. I'd say, in, with now what we now know, that he's a hybrid. He's half human, but he's half something else, something alien. The man himself is apparently, he'll come on the scene shortly. Well, I believe that now. I believe it's going to happen very soon. I believe the revelation of the Antichrist is going to happen very soon, or Satan's son come on the scene. When you think all the things have been happening in the last few years, the last four or five years, unbelievable. The scent into darkness and madness and insanity that's going on on this planet now, 2023. Yeah, this story was originally written in the, in the 70s, so, but you can see how far the world's gone astray since then. You know, the world has to be in a very dark situation for the devil to come on the scene or for his son to come on the scene. It has to be pretty dark and descended into quite a lot of darkness, which it has done. Apparently, he's even going to be killed and then come back to life. The beast which was wounded unto death but did live, Revelation 13.3. It's going to be just like a resurrection, another imitation of Jesus. Because he's wounded unto death, he comes back to life. You see, the devil has a trinity too, of which he's the God, the Father, then he has the Antichrist, his son, then he has the evil spirit, the false prophet. The devil has imitated everything else. He's even going to imitate the death, resurrection, second coming of Christ in his Antichrist son. And that's the end of that very interesting paranormal chapter. That's chapter 38 from my book, Out the Bottomless Pit. And I'll read some other chapters shortly. But for today, thanks for listening. I do ask you to get these books of mine. This is my paranormal books, are Out the Bottomless Pit and Out the Bottomless Pit 2. The second one, the first one came out to Insights books and ancient Hebrew books like Joshua, Jubilees, Enoch. Do get my books which will give you a lot of spirit world, what's going on around really happening. So, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye for now.